Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to be doing a lineup build for the NHL slate for this evening. And again, we're doing this as kind of a process video to show you the, uh, the way I like to build my lineups for, uh, for MME slates. And we're going to be using both the combination of my Sheets as well as uh, SaberSim. And uh, again, the purposes of these videos are not so that I can tell you how to make money on this slate. Um, although if that helps, that's great. But also it's, it's more to give you a process to implement yourself such that you don't have to keep coming back to these videos. So it's kind of a, a cross between, you know, repeating content and, and, and evergreen content. Um, now, again, you are going to need some type of projections and some type of tools to, to implement this process. And I do encourage everybody to become you know, premium subscribers at TrueDFS um, if you want to use the same tools that I'm using. But uh, it's, it's more of, uh, you know, again, it, it, it's more instructive on, on how to build lineups than how to build lineups for this particular slate. But we're using this particular slate as an example. Okay, that's going down on record is probably the worst intro. I normally would just, edit, just completely smash this video and start over. But... I don't have time, so we're going to get right into it. So the first thing I want to do is I want to look at Sabres Sim and see, based on the implied goal totals, which teams, at least I would expect, to project. Um, and we're starting off with Florida with a 3.6, uh, New Jersey with a 3.6, Islanders with a 3.6, Minnesota 3.4, Calgary 3.8. So uh, you'll have about you know, four teams that are going to probably be competing for the most, uh, I don't want to say ownership because it depends on price, but four teams that are competing for the highest raw fantasy points in general. The other thing I like to look at is kind of the way that the slate breaks out as far as timing goes. And you'll see three, seven o'clock to seven thirty, two two eights, and then a nine and a 10. Um, with of note is that one of the uh, the better games, the, the Calgary side at 3.8, is uh is at 9 p.m. Sorry, so again, as of note, the Calgary game with a 3.8 total is nine o'clock. So it will provide the opportunity to do some late swapping if if you if you wanted to. Um and you should. <laughs> anyway, uh so again, what I'm looking at is there's a couple of different, you know, uh slates sort of. So there's the Florida slate, which is with New Jersey, they're both 3.6 or whatever. Um, and they're kind of like the seven o'clock slate. In the 7.30 slate, you have the Islanders. Then you have Calgary at 3.8. And although it's part of the same slate, right, I, I like to kind of plan my late swapping around knowing what, you know, what the good teams rate to be. I will say also that if you guys learn anything from this video, it certainly wasn't because of my presentation because I'm so distracted by four other things. I don't know why I'm continuing. But you know what? I'm continuing anyway. Nonetheless, uh, so let's take a look at the sheets and see what players uh, rate to be you know, the best plays. And this is the, literally the way I look at it. Um, these are my sheets, and you can get these on TrueDFS.com. Um, but if you have your own set of projections, I think the process is sort of the same. Uh, I, I'm looking at these rated by sheets value score, which is kind of a combination of both points per dollar and fantasy points. Um, and the first thing that I'll notice is I'll try to notice if there are teams that rate highly that are, you know, bunched you know, that, that are on the same line, you know, uh, like Jack Hughes, I see him at 8.5 K being the top play. And then I do see Jesper Bratt and then I see Timo Meyer. So this is going to be expensive to get to and Hershon. But if you can get to these one, two, three, four New Jersey guys, it's going to be a very, very strong, strong stat. Um, the other thing I like to look at, let's see. So Kyle Palmieri at 4,500 is kind of the, the value of the slate tonight. And I do see that Brock Nelson, who rates well, also is on his line. So that could be something that you might end up doing. Um Kaprizov doesn't really have any line mates near here. Or Zuccarello, I guess. Um, but he's only on the power play line with him. He's not on the, the even straight line as well. What else? 
these two Calgary guys. All right. So yeah, they're just not on the same line. So it's looking as though we're going to try to get those Jersey guys in if, if at all possible. Um, and I would also add that this JJ Paterka at 4,300, he was actually my hero in one of these slates a couple of weeks ago. He's a cheap value play. So between him and Kyle Palmieri, you could even use Backlund maybe even as a one-off down here. There are some values available to you. Even here, another Jersey guy that will probably let you get to these Jersey guys. Um, so again, we haven't actually tried to build a lineup yet. We're just trying to, to figure out who we think are going to make good lineups. So what I like to do next is actually try to do a hand build lineup with the guys that I think I'd want to play for a couple of reasons. Number one, if I could actually build it with build them, then I might actually use it in my big buy-in. But also it gives you a sense for how other people are going to build and even sometimes how the optimizers are going to build. Now it's not so easy in hockey because with everybody using different SIM products and different algorithms and stuff like that and different optimizers, the optimizers are always going to do better <laughs> than the hand build as far as being able to come up with good lineups that work well together, especially in hockey. But I think it's worth trying. So what we're going to try to do is build a lineup with Hughes, Bratt, Meyer, and Hersher. Uh, sorry for the pronunciation, and see if we can't just make it work. Um, let's so let's just see again if we can put this in. So Hersher, Hershire, whatever, Hughes, Brat, Meyer. All right, so all four of these guys. Now, before we do anything else, I'd like to put in a cheap goaltender. Um, just to, again, see what we can do that, that projects well. Olmark, 7,900. I'd love cheaper than that. I don't even have that many goalies projected here. Maybe Casey DeSmith, 7,500. Right. Put him in. DeSmith. Okay. So if we did that, we would have 3,800 per player left. Now I know what we would need. We'd probably need that back one. So let's just take a look. Because there was a 3,300 I think I saw also that kind of worked. Yeah, so Huberdo, for example, is 3,900. So we played him, oh my God, look at all these guys, and Kuzmenko and Balcon. I mean, this, this works, right? You don't have defensemen now. Well, let's let's just start with Backlands. These guys got to be popular, right? They're so cheap. Backlands, and then which one did I say? Who would have thirty nine hundred? I've actually heard of him. And so we need two defensemen at thirty three fifty a man. I mean, we could do that, right? Not, not with him, but let's see. 6,400. 6,400. I mean, we, we'd love him to be on that same team. Wouldn't that be cool? Ooh. So you could play Pollock at 3,900. Cam Fowler at 3,500. So all these guys. Ooh, Luke Hughes on the first power play line for the Devils. Seems to be what I want to do. So let's let's put that in. And now some any old thirty one hundred dollar guy at defense is going to do. So let's just search here. Three K Mike Ryan, for example. So you can do this. You know you you can play these Devils and you can play them with Calgarys and and make this work if you were so inclined, okay? So let's see now the fun part. Let's see what we get when we use SaberSim to help us. Let's uh, upload. And we're gonna upload our projections to SaberSim. You could use the SaberSim projections as well, or your own within SaberSim. 
exclude unlisted players who TJ Oshie is out. So we'll exclude him. And since we're playing 40 lineups, we're going to set it for 40. We're going to build, you know, let's have some fun. We'll build the full 5,000. Yeah, it's a big slate. Well, what is it, eight games? It's a medium-sized slate. So we'll build all 5,000 lineups just so we have a lot to choose from. And what we're going to do is we're going to run a contest sim where we're going to compare what our 5,000 lineups would look like against what we think the field is going to play. And... Uh, what I find it very, what I find extraordinary, is the way that different sports have the contest sims react. And I, what I mean is that certain sports you create your own lineups based on just your, you know, your regular, you know, optimizing, and then when you use you your contest sims, there's some sports where it's not that much of a difference. Those are usually the highly projectable sports like basketball, football, whatever. When it comes to hockey and baseball, you get completely different teams when you apply the contest sim settings. And I'll show you. Hey, look at that. How good am I? It, it found the exact five-man stack that I found. Oh, and there's the Paterka. I forgot about it. So there's going to be a lot of devil stuff. So, like for example, when I look here, it says that I would want 100% basically the devils because it's so easy to get to them. Um, so you could just kind of stop right here, right? We didn't run a contest sim, but we're getting good lineups rated by Sabre score based on the large slate, you know, large slate uh, settings. And that's the first thing I do is see what I would get kind of normally. And sometimes I'll just, I'll upload my lineups uh, right now. Um, the next thing you might want to consider is messing around with min uniques um, to make it so you have a, you know, a, Less, less concentration on particular combinations. So one way you could do that is by going, keep going min uniques as many as you can until Saber Sim yells at you, meaning that it doesn't even give you 40. And it looks as though in hockey, it's going to let you do as many as you want. Eight. So you can do as many min uniques as you want. Okay, it won't let you admin uniques eight. So what I like to do is go to the first where you can do the, the minimum and then give yourself one more. That's what Jordan from Saberson recommended. I think that's a good idea. And now, interestingly, when you look at the team stacks, New Jersey, you're actually only getting 20, you know, 30% of, and you're getting 45% of the islands. So that's sort of interesting. So what you could do is you could just, just run this and just save these. Now, what you got to do is you got to update your, you got to tell Saberson what you have already. And as you see, remember, I just built those lineups, so I'm telling it this. And while we're in this screen, I want to add the contest sims for these particular tournaments that I'm in. So we could either base our presumptions of what the field's going to do based on saber some ownership, or what I like to do is just that 5,000 lineup build. I'm going to presume that over 5,000 lineups, it's going to represent the, 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 the thing, you know, the, the distribution of what people are going to play. Okay. So we're going to save that. But the first thing I want to do is let's, let's save these to my contests and we'll just, We'll save these to the kick sitting for now. And we could just leave it like this. Or we could then apply the contest. So let's go back to Min Uniques 1, and then we'll hit Run Contest. And I wonder, and this is going to be interesting, what the stack exposure is going to be when we apply contest sim settings, meaning that if we know that everybody's going to be playing the Devils, then maybe we should play other. We should play other teams to get some leverage. And the question is always, and this is the DFS age-old question, is is it worth playing what we know are the worst lineups in the name of being unique? And where does that, where is that middle ground? What are decent enough lineups that can win you the whole cheese, but not too unique that you have no chance, right? So let's see what it looks like. We ran the contest sims, and now we're going to go to the drop, drop down and see within the kick save, and we sort by risk-adjusted ROI, 
what the overall distribution is. And you would be getting about 60% Devils, 47% Calgary, and 33% Islanders at Minuniques 1. I actually might prefer this to that other wild six, you know, Min Unique six uh, situation. So why don't we keep this? I think this is a much better idea. So we'll go Min Uniques two, but there's one thing that we have to do still. We have to make sure that we get the types of stacks we want. And again, this is what I do. Some people just like to go with whatever Saber Sim recommends here, but I just don't want to play these non-traditional stacks. Like I want to play either four threes, five twos, or, or six man onslaught. So we're going to restrict our lineups to those. And then we'll go back just to check to make sure. So now we're actually getting more Calgary than Devils in this particular contest. And I kind of like it. So we will change the kick save to this. Now, just for the hell of it, I do want to see what, it would get me for the energy line, which is the big buy-in. And that looks like, it looks almost exactly, oh my God, like what I did. How funny is that? The only difference is that I didn't take Kuzmenko. I took somebody else and I took Olmark. And, that is amazing, actually. But again, this is all going to change when the projections change. So, um, but again, this is process. This is what I like to look at. Um, wow, that's kind of cool. Anyway, so let's let's just give it its due. Let's 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 save it. Save this one to the energy line, and then we'll download them to like to here. And you get used to operating quickly and clicking quick quickly and and, and messing around like this it will allow you to be ready to go once, you know, let's say you want to update your projections by 10 minutes of post time, you'll know that you can do so and, and still have time to, to maneuver. Um, okay, so I hope that wasn't as big of a train wreck as it seemed to me. Hopefully it helped and uh, I encourage you to come back for more of these. Good luck, everybody.